China Rose and for this particular episode of the Zodiac Forecast I'm going to address uh, the Western and the Chinese or Eastern Zodiac type signs and why different signs in a different context. So in order to explain that to you more fully, um, you know the planet has one equatorial belt and that belt is a, like a wheel or is displayed as a wheel, is used as a zodiac wheel or uh, for instance in the tarot it's the wheel of fortune. Um, of course the wheel is one of man's greatest inventions. Without the wheel what, what could we do? Not much. So on this equatorial belt all of the other planets that sit out in the atmosphere of the cosmic wonder they all sit within a range of each other in terms of depth. So they all sit on basically a, a plane, as it were. They're not like way up here and way down there. And they all sit, the point of that is, is because they all line up a particular way. They all hold the energy of the planet together where it is. We get our light from the sun. Now, how does all this fit in with uh, uh, why is the Sagittarius a rat and why is the Capricorn an ox? All our planet systems are all governed by the cosmic world outside of us. And, and so having said that, on the wheel, the wheel pretty much looks like the clock because it gets divided up into 12 sections. And on those 12 sections are the western signs and also uh, what were named in the earlier days in the Asiatic system um, was now called the Chinese signs, but in the origins of it, it actually predated China becoming China. And the Taoist system, which is earlier than that, um, had named the sections on the wheel for animals. That those sections uh, in the Western system are, are called primarily houses, and they're really just grids on the wheel. So if you look at the clock and you've got 12 sections, and you have 12 celestial patterns that were named for them, and you have 12 animals that were named for them. They're all really, they correspond or essentially the same. Uh, the Western signs no longer line up with the exact house or grid because our planet has what's called a procession of the equinox. That procession happens um, on a full cycle in 26, approximately 26,000 years but it also happens um, in house to house or meaning from each segment that we talked about approximately every 2,150 years. We're getting pretty close to a new one now, about 100 years away, maybe less. Um, but in any case, that changes our pole star. When we process an equinox, the planet will shift and wobble, and then we will have a new pole star. And right now, Polaris, it sits at about 3 degrees north, and that's our pole star. Um, in the origins, there's a one, what I call a zero degree or one degree, which is Draco. Draco is a dragon star, it's, and that's where I have taken my calculations from that zero point measurement. So that is actually our sort of our spring equinox, if you look at where it falls in the seasons. So it kind of makes sense, it's when things begin again and things get rolling and moving. But in any case, so we're back to the wheel. The wheel's got 12 segments. These segments have had different names um, from being called houses to having celestial patterns to having animals named after them. Now, when I started my feng shui, uh, um, it was important that I calculated things particularly so that I could address what needed to be where, when, so that we could get the energy to the person that needed it for the reason that they wanted it. Now, if you're three degrees off and you're going to grandma's house, you're going to be traveling the wrong direction three degrees, you're never going to get there. So it's very, very important that these calculations are accurate. So in order to make the calculations very accurate, it was necessary for me to do all of the work myself to reintegrate everything back. Because the Chinese animals and the Western signs have all been processed since they were originally named and they no longer actually line up with anything. But the clock system allows for the use of the animal names in conjunction with the points on the compass. And that's where everything comes back into play. So, for instance, my cameraman, I know that if he was born in a certain year of the tiger, and he is born in a certain month of cancer, which corresponds to the goat on the wheel, then I can automatically adjust that. And in the system I use, we have a year, we have a month, we have a day, an hour, and a minute. 
Now, there are also sometimes some hidden animals because Jupiter, which is our largest planet, put all the planets together and they are still not as big as Jupiter. Jupiter is the only planet in our solar system that gives off more energy than it takes in from the sun, keeping our world together in a phenomenal way that's wonderful and mysterious and beautiful all at the same time. I think that's why they sometimes call it an elegant universe. <laughs> well, anyway, let's get back to the animals. So if you have looked at it from that perspective, you would see then there's five hands on the clock. And wherever those hands, whether it's your year, whether it is your hour, whether it is your day, whether it is your month, that sort of thing, then you would see that everything then can be readjusted to correspond with a sign. And when it is brought back into the animal system, it corresponds with our personal nature because we are animals ourselves. We have very animal traits to our nature. There's no doubt about that. And in doing so, also it allows me to line up situations and people with their compass points exactly in location so that we can pinpoint what we need to do and where we need to do it and when we need to do it. And that's why I do the system that I use. But the point is, I wanted to share it with you, that the Sagittarius corresponds to the rat, ox corresponds to the Capricorn, tiger corresponds to Aquarius, the hare corresponds to Pisces, and we've got the dragon corresponds to Aries, and Taurus corresponds to the serpent, very important animal. The serpent, the double coiled serpent, is the helix that represents our life energy. Anyway, moving on. After that, we have the horse, which corresponds to Gemini, sometimes known as the twin. Um, then we have the goat, which corresponds to Cancer. The goat is also sometimes known as the sheep or the deer. And we then go on to the monkey, which is the Leo, corresponds to the sign of the Leo. And then we have the bird. I call it the bird because in the earliest systems, they did call it simply a bird, and the bird can be any type of bird in that sense, but the celestial animal is known as the phoenix. That's the mythical celestial animal, um, one of the cardinal points. And it is also known as the rooster or the hen. There are a few other terms out there. And in any case, so that moves on to the dog, which is Libra. And any of you who know dog people will say that they're always trying to get everybody to get along and they'll do almost anything. So that's a dog person all the way. You know how dogs are. They're so marvelous. What an amazing animal. And then we have the pig. But the pig is also the boar. Um, the, the boar corresponds to Scorpio. And a lot of people that are Scorpios, I think they like to find out that they're also the boar because it's kind of a fascinating animal that has fascinating traits. So thank you very much for letting me share this with you. And if you have questions or need information, then just let me know.